Good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our service of worship. I hope that you are well, and I hope that you are safe. Now, there's a lot happening today. We have, of course, the recent commemorations of Victory in Europe Day. We have Christian Aid Sunday as well, along with all the other things that are going on in the world just now. So there's a lot to pack into our service, and it's only a 20-minute service. So it's difficult perhaps to do justice to, to, to everything. There's an acknowledgement of VE Day later on in the service, in the musical reflection towards the end, and I'll include Christian Aid in the opening prayer. But primarily, we are here to worship God, to honour Christ. And so um, it, it's maybe difficult to include everything in our service, but let's, let's remember what we are here to do. And with those words, I would like you to join with me in the call to worship today. And the call to worship comes from the book of Psalms, from Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And we say together, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords, his love endures forever. Amen. Come with me and pray. God of heaven and earth, in these times of isolation, apart from loved ones, distant from friends, away from neighbours, thank you that there is nothing in all of creation, not even the coronavirus, that is able to separate us from your love. And may your love that never fails continue to be shared through the kindness of strangers looking out for each other, for neighbours near and far, all recognising our shared vulnerability, each of us grateful for every breath and willing everyone to know the gift of a full and healthy life. Today we pray for the work of Christian aid around the world under such strange circumstances and we ask that you would bless all that they do and the people with whom they work we pray that you would bless us as we come together motherwell south worshiping with friends around the country and friends around the globe and we say together the prayer your son taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Um, for myself and Sheila personally, um, Sheila received a letter um, saying that she had to socially shield because of an underlying health condition. Um, and we knew that that would be the case, but to actually see it in black and white, it, it really did actually impact on us quite quite profoundly. It, it really kind of took the uh, wind out of our sails. And we had a day or two of, of quiet reflection and you know discussion as to how that looked and what we need to do to put things in place to to ensure that her risk of exposure um was was limited uh, so shopping for example is now a, a chore rather than a pleasurable experience and instead of doing it like two or three times a week i'm only doing it once a week um, and when i come home well, what a, what a palaver you, you come home and i have to change clothing i have to sanitize everything down but it's a necessary thing to do. So, um, we're fine. Um, we've had a, a couple of teary moments along the way um, with various news um, reports and, and, and people that we know and, and things like that, but the house is actually full of, of joy, of laughter. Um, I'm praying more. Um, 
I'm not just part of the prayer group and, and the prayer chain that Anne sends out, but I am actually praying more. And through that, I, I am reading more Bible verses and things about hope and strength and faith and love. I miss my church family. Um, I miss Sundays where we can all sit or stand together um, and sing and praise God. At the moment, um, I'm not finding life too difficult. Um, I would say I'm quite content. I'm quite content to stay at home normally. I don't find it a real trial. I also have Stuart for company, so um, I'm not on my own, living on my own day by day. My family, um, I miss my family. I, fit, I um, keep in touch with them through um, FaceTime. See my granddaughters and they'll tell me what they've been up to and what schooling they've done and, um, and my grandson. Um, but I miss, I would spend once a week with, a day a week with my granddaughters normally. Um, I miss the natural chat, I miss the cuddles and the kisses and I'm telling you that they love you. I miss my wee grandson, he's a really lovable wee boy, he would cuddle you, um, he's full of mischief and you don't know what he's going to be up to next, so he's only five, um, so work work can be really difficult um, from a, an emotional point of view. As nurses we're quite tactile, um, I'm a district nurse in Hamilton and a lot of my patients would be palliative patients. Um, three weeks ago I was asked to visit a patient, a young woman who had died to confirm her death and when I arrived her husband and her two young children were really distressed. Have you ever tried to just comfort somebody with words? You can't touch their arm or their shoulder or if you know them really well and you've built up a rapport with that family, you can even give them a hug. That, that was hard, it was really hard. My faith, I would say I've always had quite a deep faith. I would say during this period of time, God has made us all stop or slow down and you can definitely see his spirit working in the world. Um, I would spend my quiet time in the morning. Um, we have set up a little group that's been facilitated through Jennifer McRae um, and we do a WhatsApp every night at nine o'clock and it's for the Crow Catch and Climb group. I feel that God is all encompassing at the moment in my life. I, I'm a, a real awareness of him being around. Um, I find myself talking to him throughout the day, at different times of the day, um, different things come through the prayer chain and we'll just stop and pray for other people. Um, so yeah, I would say God is really close to my heart. I would say through our little hope group at nine o'clock, um, God is helping to strengthen and deepen the relationships within that little group and I'm really thankful for that. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake. They were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were out in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Amen, and may God bless to us this reading from his holy word. Yeah, for us, we're both now based at home and aren't travelling into work anymore. It's meant that we've had to learn new ways of communicating with friends and family, be that through living room windows or by online programmes such as Zoom. And there are some day-to-day -day things we don't do as much as we normally would, for example. We don't dress smartly for work. Or go to the hairdressers. Or shave. 
Obviously, we're both disappointed that we're not able to do some of the things that previously we've taken for granted. But while we're both feeling lucky that neither of us have had an illness or anything like that, it's also been quite sad that we haven't been able to see family as much as we'd like, especially my sister who is pregnant just now. We've both really enjoyed the weekly worships that have been posted online each week and we now have a Sunday routine that involves streaming the service on television. Since the start of lockdown, the pace of life has been noticeably slower, which has allowed us to reevaluate our priorities. We appreciate the things that we never noticed before, and we also appreciate the things that we previously took for granted. We are missing our friends, our family, and our church family, and all the day to day activities that we take part in. We're missing our holidays to Arne, to Butte, to Isla. Our drives to the coast. And of course, our cruises. Our faith is as strong as ever. The world has been shaken to its core. Some things will not be shaken. Some things will remain. God is unchanging. His love is unchanging. The road to salvation is unchanging. Imagine for a few moments that you're out for your daily walk. You're going down towards the nature reserve. And as you head down there, you're listening to the birds singing, the sun streaming down upon you. You're aware of the beauty of God's creation. But you're also aware that somebody's walking towards you. You move over to one side of the path, hoping that the person will move over to the other side. But no, they don't. They align themselves with you. And you begin to think, has this person ever heard of social distancing? As you get closer, it's pretty obvious that they want to engage you in conversation. And this person, this man, beckons you to stop. He says to you, are you out for your daily walk? Yes, I am, you reply. He says to you, well, listen, I have a better idea. Why don't you abandon your walk? And instead, why don't you come with me? And I'll take you on a journey that has endless possibilities. And so you do. You follow this man. Imagine for a few moments that you're in Asda. You've queued outside to get in. You're doing some shopping for yourself, essential food supplies, and for one of your elderly neighbours. You have your face mask on and your rubber gloves. And you decide that You'll just nip down the wine aisle because you bought some salmon and a nice white wine would go very nicely with it. It's Friday night, why not? And as you're perusing the wines and deciding whether to go New Zealand or whether to go France, you're aware that somebody is standing very close to you. You assume it's a member of staff. But you turn round and realise it's not. It's a man and he's looking at you. And he says to you, are you looking for a bottle of wine for your meal tonight? You say, yes. He says to you, well, I have a better idea. If you really want a heavenly vintage, then why not follow me? And I'll take you on an incredible journey. And so you put your New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc back. And you do, you follow this man out of the shop and you embark upon a new journey. Now imagine for a moment that you are a fisherman on the Sea of Galilee. This is where you ply your trade. It's been a family business passed down from one generation to another. And you're up early. And at four o'clock in the morning, you find yourself preparing your nets, ready for your daily launch. When just at that moment, someone is standing on the shore watching you. You look towards him, you recognize him as being a, a teacher, a rabbi. He calls out to you. And he's asking if, if you're about to go fishing. You reply, yes. And he says to you, well, put your nets down and come and follow me. And I'll help you to fish for men and women and children and people of all ages. And so you do. You follow him. 
Now, these stories are ridiculous. They're absolutely fabricated nonsense. You wouldn't do that kind of thing. But the thing is, one of those stories is true. One of them happened. And of course, you and I both know which one it is. I wonder why the disciples left their nets to follow Jesus. Not just one of them, but four of them seem to have made that decision on two different occasions. Simon and Andrew, and then James and John. What was it about Jesus made them lay down their nets and follow him when they were in the middle of their, of their shift? This is their livelihood. And I've often grappled with that because they would have probably known who Jesus was. They would have heard about him by reputation. They may have even heard him teaching. They may have seen him about. But at that point, they probably did not know that he was the Christ. So what was it about Jesus made them lay down their nets and follow him? Maybe they thought that he was a man on the up and it would be well worth keeping in with him and being part of his entourage. So they decided a bit of spice in their lives would be no bad thing and they would follow him. I don't know. Maybe they were bored with the mundane lives they were living. They were looking for something new, something different, and so they decided to follow him. Again, I don't know. Maybe they were inspired by the Spirit of God to accept there was something about this person. There was something of God about this man. And so, filled with God's Spirit, inspired by God, moved by God, responding to his voice, they decided at that moment in their lives to follow him. Maybe. Certainly, out of all the possibilities, that seems to me to be the most likely. So let me put the question then to all of you who are watching today. What made you follow Jesus? That's a difficult question to answer. What made you watch our worship today online? Maybe that's an easier question to answer in some respects. Now, for some of you, you maybe are watching online today because it's become a, a little routine in these last six or seven weeks. For others, you may be watching online today because you can't go to your own church and so you're, you're watching our service here. But maybe, just maybe, in amidst all the possibilities... Maybe you're watching today because the Spirit of God has moved you to do that. And maybe Jesus is also calling you to lay down your nets and to follow him. And this is probably a, a good time to ask ourselves that question. Am I being called to follow Jesus? Because of all the things that are happening in the world around us, maybe, maybe God is speaking to us. Maybe God is challenging us. The thing is that if we're being called to follow Jesus, some kind of response is required. Sitting on the fence is not an option. Or saying, maybe, but not now. It's not really an option. When Jesus calls us to lay down our nets, the answer is either yes or no. So what's our response if we feel that Jesus is perhaps calling us? For many of us, making that kind of response requires some level of commitment. In other words, we're all required to lay down our nets. Now, I don't know what, what those nets are in your life. I know what the nets are in my life. The nets are very often things that tangle me up, things that, that draw me day by day, things that quite often get in the road of me having a full relationship with Jesus. And I have to forcibly remind myself to put those nets to one side and to spend time with Jesus. I don't know what the nets are in your life. Sometimes the nets are addictions that we have. Sometimes the nets are our daily routines and the, the hectic rush that life can be. Other times the nets can be the 1,001 things that come rushing at us when we wake up in the morning and demand our time and our energy and our thought. We have to put our nets to one side. We have to lay down our nets if we are to follow Jesus. What's Jesus asking you to do today? And what's your response? 
Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul I worship your holy name The sun comes up It's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song Steph, I'm Rona's door. Just sending a wee message to Jean and everyone that helped her knit these wee button strips um, and donate them to University Hospital Wisher. Um, they really do help save her ears from sores from wearing the mask all day long. Um, so I just wanted to send a wee message to everybody to say thanks very much. We really appreciate it. It is a really hard time just now. Um, and we hope that if you can't stay home, you're staying safe and you're helping us protect our NHS. Thanks. I am currently off work due to COVID-19. I went from working a five day week to not working any. I have taken the job of being Sophie's homeschooling teacher, which can sometimes be a real challenge. It is a very lonely and uncertain time. We are unsure of when our lives are going to go back to some sort of normality. I miss coming to church on a Sunday, but my daily Bible study and prayers have helped me through this time. COVID-19 has affected me and my family in a major way, with both my mum and dad testing positive for the virus and spending time in hospital, and my mum being on a ventilator for 10 days. During that time, I would say that I felt worried and scared. Amazingly, my mum and dad are now both home and well on the road to recovery. And this along with the overwhelming support that both myself and my whole family received from Alan, the prayer group, this congregation and others, I feel has strengthened my faith.
National Golf, National Football, National Going Out for a Meal. But then I've got my other responsibilities. I've got, I'm an only child. My mother's in sheltered housing. And to be honest, when I reflect on it now, I feel that in the past, before this COVID-19 started, I've really only been scratching the surface. But since COVID-19 happened, I feel it's much deeper now. She's isolated. She's not allowed out. I take care of her accounts, all her bills. But more so, I contact her at least once a day, if not twice. I'm also a, an elder at the church. I also have somebody on uh, my district who will be 90 this week. Again, she's isolating. Uh, again, I'm, I'm in, contact, uh, in contact with her at least once every two days. But I feel that, again, there is a depth to that relationship now that was never there in the past. I mean, it's almost as though God has stripped away all the rubbish and all the extras in my life and taking us back to what we were created for and that's loving and caring for each other. How do I feel and how has this affected my faith? Well, yes, I'm concerned for my family. I'm concerned for you, my church family. My heart goes out to everyone who has lost a loved one during this period. The big question that comes to my mind is, if God was to take me now, is my spiritual house in order? And I struggle with that a bit, because I know that no matter how much I try, I'll always fall short. There's nobody perfect in this world, and we all fall short. But what brings great joy to my heart is knowing that God loves each and every one of us. Loving God. May the lessons of old be with us as we live today. Help us to remember that your peace should reign in our country and in our lives. Help us to know that you are with us at all times. And be with us all as we continue our journey this week. Encircle us with your loving arms. Clothe us with your Holy Spirit. And speak to us your words of challenge, reminding us to lay down our nets and to follow you.